Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef and registered dietitian Jessica Bodwin back in the kitchen. And today, it's all about prebiotic and probiotic. We're making a radicchio and blood orange salad, roasted sweet potatoes with miso tahini, and orange ginger kvass. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great show for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen, a familiar face, Jessica Bodwin. Thank you for having me again. Well, thank you for being here. You are a registered dietitian who is always bringing us like healthy, delicious meals. Yes. And today is no different. Absolutely. I work at Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center right here in Torrance. And uh, we, we both provide great patient care for our community, but we also do a lot of promotion in our community to build healthy habits um, from the ground well, up. Well, here you are on the show promoting healthy habits. Exactly. So perfect. Now, <laughs> now today, there's a little bit of a theme. Yes. Prebiotic, probiotic. Exactly. Explain the difference. Please. Two very similar words, but slightly different meanings. Right. Um, probiotics, many people are familiar with. We've heard a lot about probiotics these days. It's one of the reasons gut why we health. talk about gut health. Uh, yogurt is rich in probiotics, and that's one kombucha. of the more well known. Exactly. Kombucha, miso, soy, uh, or excuse me, miso, as well as um, all sorts of different uh, fermented condiments like sauerkraut and kimchi. Um, so probiotics are actually the living beneficial bacteria that we can consume in food that then colonize our digestive tract, helping to establish balance, helping to keep us healthy and reduce inflammation. Okay. Prebiotics, on the other hand, are actually fibers or uh, carbohydrate um, molecules that the actual bacteria consume. So when the bacteria eat the prebiotics, they create healthy compounds that our bodies can use for energy and that also help reduce. So if we were to create like an analogy, yes. it's almost like if you were trying to bloom some yeast if you put a little sugar in there. Exactly the same principle, yes. Okay, so it's, so it's, it's eating, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a live bacteria. Exactly. So the prebiotics are the fibers that we can't digest, but our bacteria do. And I think it's important to talk about that because we hear the word bacteria and it's, mm -hmm. first of all, it's an, it's an ugly sounding yes, word. Yes. It doesn't sound good, right? Yes. And, and I think you associate it with something that's not great. We associate it with sickness and, right. and illness. But in fact, there are there are good bacteria, or there is good bacteria. Absolutely, it's a full spectrum. There are certainly bacteria that can make us sick. For example, if you don't cook meat well enough um, to the right temperature, you could potentially uh, harbor some unfriendly bacteria. But there are also thousands of species of beneficial bacteria that we have co-evolved with. And that lives inside us, in exactly. our gut, in, 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 that, in that area specifically. The most abundant, most diverse balance of bacteria on and in our body is in our colon, in our digestive tract. Got you. Yeah. Okay, now we've got a, a really fun menu. We've got a, we've got a great yes. salad. Uh, we've also got a, a drink called kvass, which we will get into what mm -hmm. that's all about later because yes. I'm, I'm, that word is stuck in my head. I love it. It sounds like kvass. <laughs> kvass. kvass. Uh, and then, but we, we were making some sweet potatoes that sound delicious, but we need to get those going first. So yes. we're just going to kind of deal with the roasting process right away. Yeah, the sweet potatoes do require some roasting. Actually, only 15 to 20 minutes because we're going to roast sweet potatoes is because when you roast potatoes, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, um, and then let them cool, they contain prebiotics as well. Some of these fibers will be consumed by our And I've always been told that potato. that like uh, the, the, the sweet potato is a healthier carb than a regular potato. Yes, it's got better... It's sort of counterintuitive. Because you hear right. sweet, you think of, it's like more sugar content <laughs> right. or what have you, and it's obviously sweeter. But it's, uh, I know, bodybuilders... Yes. Real big into like sweet potatoes. It's an excellent source of beta carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A, which helps boost immune um, immune function. So it's got a lot of great benefits. Okay. It's also slightly higher in fiber content um, than your standard white potato that you might use. Gotcha. Okay, so you cut that in half lengthwise. Mm -hmm. Quarters and then lengthwise. Half again lengthwise. And I just I'm going for some like almost handheld chunks. Like almost like big steak fry size. Yes, exactly. Okay. So you can do this if you want more bite size. If you got kids at home, and bite size works better for you. That's another option. Oh, they'll option. be fine with this. What are you, you know. talking about? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Pretty straightforward roasting here. I'm just going to roast them up with a little bit of um, oil, salt, 
And some pepper. Um, it's the, all you really need. That's it. You know, uh, the, the world's two greatest spices and, uh, and then a little bit of uh, EVOO, right? You know it. Um, just a little bit of oil and some salt. And we've got the oven already preheated to 450. Nice um, hot oven. Yes. Again, I'm looking for some caramelization on this, so that's Yeah, good right? Idea. And with the, with the sugar content that's just in there. toss that up. Yeah, well, I don't have to save yeah. your hands. I'll just Thank this you. Of those you want to get a little pepper on there, too? Yeah. Sure, I got it. I got it. You, you got, got it. it. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Very simple seasoning. And then the sauce is what's really going to bring the flavor and the Yeah, I can the smell the, 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 the miso from here, and yes. it smells delicious. Yes. And the tahini, actually, too. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. so into the oven it goes. 450, 15, 20 minutes. Yep. You may want to stir it every five minutes or so. Or so we'll turn keep an them so you get caramelization on more than just one side. That's it. Okay. That's it. On to our salad. Okay. So for our salad today, we're going to be using a radicchio, mm -hmm. uh, which is a nice kind of bitter lettuce, excellent prebiotic, as well as fennel, which is also quite prebiotic. Great. Those are the main um, salad greens, so to speak, but we'll also be incorporating some citrus. I brought in some blood oranges, which are my favorite citrus fruit. I get it. Bitter. Very bitter. Yes. Sort of like counterbalance to the sweetness. With the sweetness. And then, of course, you have the very anise sort of qualities that, that fennel Exactly. Has. And we're going to even emphasize that fennel y anise -y kind of flavor with a little bit of tarragon love as well. Love it. Oh, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. very underutilized herb. I love tarragon. All of this available at the Torrance Farmer's Market. Exactly. Very beautiful versions of it. So mm -hmm. uh, what would you, would you like me to do something? So, yeah, would you like to do the fennel or radicchio? Sure, uh, whatever. You, you, you pick. I'll do the radicchio. Okay. Right. How would you like the fennel? Pack? So um, normally what I'll do is take off the fronds because we're actually going to use some of those fronds for right. the garnish. It looks really nice on top. Yep. Um, I generally will cut it in half lengthwise mm -hmm. um, and then take out the core. Yes. Because um, we're eating exactly it raw. That's exactly what we'll do here with this radicchio as well. Um, taking out the core, so that's going to be a little tough. And for the radicchio, I will just be separating the leaves pretty simply um, so that we'll have large chunks of radicchio leaves in this salad. Yeah, I'll, I'll, a lot of times I'll bag these up and I'll save those for, it's, it's great garnish. Mm -hmm. um, you can do uh, some things with the, these stalks, they can be a little bit woody sometimes, mm -hmm. but you can also, you know, you macerate them enough. You know, in some oil and vinegar, they can, uh, and slice them thin enough, uh, or chop them real small and put them into like a chicken salad. Yeah. You know, I'll do it with stuff like that, but, but the bulb is where it's at. Yes. And how would you like that bulb cut once I have the core? So, very thinly sliced. Um, the key is to get it thin because fennel can be kind of fibrous. Um, so, you want it to be very thinly sliced to break up some of those Okay, you like it this way? Exactly. All right, got it. Um, I also wanted to get a head start on the dressing a little bit because okay. what we'll be doing is throwing that into the bowl with the dressing. Okay. Um, dressing is pretty simple. I'm just going to be taking a little bit of orange juice. Don't mind my chopping here. Okay. <laughs> Chop away. I gave you the harder task. How's that? Mm, nice, <laughs> That's right? beautiful. Look at that. Nice and thin. That's even. Well done. I'm impressed with your knife skills. Thank you. For our dressing, um, we've got a few ingredients um, that we're going to be using today. I just squeezed in some fresh orange, um, orange juice. I'm also going to be using sherry vinegar for a little bit more acidity. Okay, I Sweet. love sherry vinegar. Yes. Uh, uh, my most used vinegar in my house. Oh, love it. wonderful. Fantastic. I also will have a little bit of honey to give it a little bit of added sweetness and then whisk that together with some olive oil. It's a very simple dressing, a little vinegar, a little oil. Well, that's the thing, you know, vinaigrettes, dressings don't have to be complicated. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I, I think that, you know, people buy a lot of bottled dressing and it's, it's so expensive and, and at the end of the day, it's, it's inferior. Right? Yeah. There's no way that you're going to tell me that a, a, a bottled dressing is better than what you're going to make right, right. now. Right. It's no got way. those preservatives and those uh, emulsifiers to keep it stable for a long period of time. Yeah, you they're, they're a always a little, they're home. always a little like, like thick and sort of uh, corn syrupy. I, I will say. Yeah. Yeah, not not necessarily a fan. No. You know, but uh, right, a few ingredients, a little acid, a little bit of oil, some salt, some pepper, some herbs, and you've got vinaigrette. And you don't want to oversalt this one. It's it's more of a sweet dressing, so the salt's really just to bring out the flavors and not necessarily to. Um, add a lot of saltiness. And now, traditionally, you, you would make a vinaigrette with a little bit of um, Dijon mustard and slowly drizzle in the oil to emulsify it. But since we're going to be eating this pretty fresh, I'm well, just going to do it. I don't know with. if you noticed, but like the, the emulsified vinaigrettes, I'm not saying that they're out of style. They're right. not. No, I mean, and I make them all the time too. 
But the broken vinaigrette is sort of something that you're seeing a lot of. Because yeah. it looks really great, actually. Yeah. When you have a broken vinaigrette, meaning it hasn't been emulsified, the oil and the, uh, the, the vinegar separate uh, over time. And it's sort of like you see the little oil and the, the, the vinegar on the plate like that. It's that great. Neat. Especially with olive oil, that would add a nice little green pop of color. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I I'm, not, I'm not... I'm uh, not... Not against a broken that. vinaigrette. I think it's actually probably, I probably do that more often than I do an emulsified one. Yeah. All right, there we go. Oh, so you're going to keep those whole? Yeah, I keep them pretty whole. Nice. I like, it looks really nice. What Can we'll I put do. These in too? Yep. What we'll do when we get back is arrange those ni on a nice big platter and uh, kind of fan it out nicely. This is a really great centerpiece. Um, for your table, it looks really beautiful. And then really the blood beautiful. orange, what would you like me to so do? So the with? blood oranges will be peeling, and then we will... Um, Supremes? Not quite supreme. Actually, what I'm going to do is slice them lengthwise. Ah, okay, all right. Um, so, so that you can see, like, the cross-section. Let's see if um, we can get... Uh, yeah, you want to give it a go? Yeah, let's see. All right, I'm going to leave about half of that let's out. Let's go a little bit more here. Okay. We'll do a couple of those. I'm also going to use one of our um, navel oranges as well. I love uh, blood oranges. They're one of my favorite types of citrus fruit. A classic navel orange, however, is going to bring a little bit of the, you know, very simple sweetness. Also good orange that you can find at the farmer's market, one that I like a lot, and would mm -hmm. be very good in this, is the cara cara. Ooh, yeah. It's a good orange. That's one of the beauties of this, uh, this salad. You can substitute a lot of different citrus fruit. You could even incorporate more citrus fruit, do a trio. I mean... The combinations are really endless. So you could a bring a little bit of a thick pith down yes. towards the bottom. So you got to use my technique. <laughs> oh, you just go. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're you're go. taking it all off by knife. That's okay. Right. All right. All right. All right. I'll clean this up. <laughs> yeah, there's using... more than one way to slice an orange, right? right. <laughs> I was using God's knife. <laughs> um, and then. These I'll save to the side for plating, but just kind of slicing them nicely, you get that kind of visual appeal of right. some wonderful orange segments. Um, and then, uh, like I said, saving some of the fronds, saving, saving some of the fennel for a garnish as well. Yeah, so this is kind of like, it's like a, it's a sort of a hybrid uh, salad slaw. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's really refreshing on its own, or you could pair this up with some soup. Have a nice sandwich or some roasted sweet potatoes. Really like good we'll be doing spring today. and summertime side dish out on the at a cookout or something like that too. Yeah. So you keep these whole like that? Yep, exactly. Great. That's it. Get a few of these seeds out here. Don't want seeds. So we'll toss with a couple of oranges. I'm also going to save some of these for a beautiful fan on the top. Nice. Yes. I love the way that blood oranges look. See, this is my favorite. This is uh, one of the reasons why I left it sliced like this. Is right. You get this beautiful. You get that, that beautiful sort of coloring. Oh, right? that's gorgeous, right? I love that. So, basically, what we'll do is toss that all up together. All right. Well, I will let you toss that. Yes. Uh, we're going to take a break and get <laughs> all of our citrus and everything cleaned up. Yes. We made quite the mess. We did. And then when we come back, we're going to work on our sauce for the sweet potatoes mm -hmm. and the kvass. The kvass. Right? It's going to be great. Don't go away. Hey, did you know that 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Go to the shelterpetproject.org and search your local shelters and rescues. Go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I am with registered dietitian Jessica Bodwin, and here's our salad. And I gotta tell you, that that's gorge. Isn't that pretty? That's really nice looking. A lot of visual appeal. I, I, I you know, like I said, I think you could bring that to any cookout, any, I mean, sp springtime, summertime. I, I really like this as a side dish to anything, mm -hmm. you know, any protein grilled or, oh my gosh, right? Yeah, fish, chicken, beef, tofu, I mean, really, it's, it's a pretty versatile. It's so nice looking. I, I really, really like that. Now, Thank you. we've got the sweet potatoes that are finishing up, but yes. you're going to get started first on the dressing or the sauce, you yes. call it, for the... Okay, show us what we, we're going to put in that. So for today's sauce, uh, I'm going to make a miso tahini sauce. So okay. I've got some white miso, which is one of the more mild flavored mild, misos. Correct, yeah. uh, tahini, which is essentially sesame seed Over paste. Sesame seeds. I've got a little bit of rice vinegar um, and uh, a little bit of water. And it's pretty straightforward. That's what we're we'll putting so together. So a little now. Asian, a little Mediterranean. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And we'll garnish the sweet potatoes when we're done with a little bit of sesame seed, sesame oil, and some. See, I'll, I'll go scallions. check on those right now, actually. That, yeah, I please. can smell them. They smell great. I think they're probably getting close. Okay. Oh, they look awesome. Wow. 
Wonderful. That is called oh, caramelization. Yes. Beautiful. And that beautiful caramelization will taste so good with this yeah. kind of earthy sauce that we've got going on here. Oh, yeah. We, these got some really nice color on them. Yeah, these are great. They're softened up just enough. Excellent. Just putting a splash of water. You don't need to overdo it with the uh, miso as well. Um, I was looking at a couple of different recipes, and, and it's, it's a really salty uh, condiment Very by salty. itself. So you right. definitely start smaller and then work your way up if you want a little bit more punch. I'm putting a little rice vinegar in there. I might thicken this with a little bit more of the tahini. You can't go wrong with tahini. I, I love that stuff. It's so good and so healthy. It's just simply sesame seed paste. You kind of want to thicken it up. I may throw all of this tahini in, in fact. Definitely one of the ingredients in, uh, in hummus. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, My wife made a delicious hummus the other day with, with roasted cauliflower. Ooh. As opposed to garbanzo beans. She's just trying to cut down on the carbs a little bit. Yeah. So she did it. And I'm going to tell you something. You put the tahini in there and a little bit of garlic and some lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And you put that on a, on, a, on a pita chip and you close your eyes Ooh. and you eat it. Yes. You'd be hard pressed to tell that that's not like garbanzo <sighs> bean hummus. I love that. You know, you can, you can obviously tell when you look at it, mm -hmm. but even consistency and flavor of it. It was like, it was, it was delicious. Mm. It was delicious and, and far less carbs. I love coming to the show because I always get great ideas. Yeah, from you. likewise. <laughs> That's why we like having you. So I'm going to plate this up right now. Okay. Um, just very simple with the dressing. I like to put a couple of blops on it and then spread That's it the around. the blops. Blops, a very scientific <laughs> term that we're using here today. Just kind of spread it around to the edges and that forms a nice base for our uh, sweet potatoes. And then that way the up. sweet potatoes aren't going to go slip sliding around yeah. when you bring them to the table, right? And every piece will have and a little bit. how would you like bit. those just sort of placed on just there? Just kind of scattered beautifully, yes. All right, with the, that, those beautiful caramelized sides facing upward. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I'm just going to slice up some scallions. So make it look like we dropped it on the plate <laughs> as opposed to... Yes, carefully disheveled. Right. <laughs> And then we'll just season that with a little, we'll top it up with some, like I said, the green onions. Um, I also like to ump the sesame level <laughs> a little bit with some toasted sesame oil. Yum. And some toasted sesame seeds. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, to finish That's it That's a great off. dish. Yeah. I mean, Simple. I mean, it sounds like a fancy dish. Ooh, miso tahini sauce. But really, it's but once again, um, a, a dish that I could see bringing, you know, as a side dish to a lot of different meals. Yeah. Doesn't have to be Mediterranean or Asian or anything. Doesn't have to necessarily be served with the salad. But that's a really nice looking plate. Yeah. You know, a Love really nice green. looking plate. And yep. And you can then even put a few black sesame seeds on there yeah. too. Ooh, for some beautiful color. Ooh. Going a little heavy handed on this oil, but you know, who doesn't like a little extra well, sesame you do oil? Have to. There, you go. <laughs> there we go. All right. That's cool. it. Cool. Awesome. Look at that. Simple, easy to make, Perfect. and very flavorful. You don't miss the meat nice with this dishes. meal. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so now. Now. On to the kvass. The kvass. I can't stop saying that word. <laughs> it's going to be your new favorite term. What is kvass? So kvass is a fermented beverage. Um, and. You know, I think a lot of times when we think about fermentation at home, we get a little bit of, uh, we get intimidated because you think of things like kombucha and that, you know. Not if you live in the wine house. Oh, okay, that's true. <laughs> we'll, we'll, that's true. We'll ferment anything. Yes. Are you kidding? Yes. Our, our, our refrigerator can be like, a, like an, it's like looks like an experiment sometimes. <laughs> that's kind of what it is when you're making fermented foods at home. Oh, yeah. This is a very straightforward, simple drink. It's, a, it's traditionally a Slavic drink that's made with rye bread as the starter, with flavored with fruit and herbs. A bread drink. A bread drink. Uh, we're not using bread today. I've heard of bread soup. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have like ribolita in, there you in, go. in Italy, in, in, in Tuscany, but, but, but bread drink. Who knew? You ferment <laughs> rye bread. Okay. Yes. So today you're doing it with what, carrots? So yes, we're going to be using some fresh carrots. Uh, we'll just be slicing those up thinly. We'll use a little bit of grated ginger, um, some orange peel, and uh, the only other ingredients, salt, water. The last ingredient, however, um, is whey, which is not whey protein. Uh, this is actual whey, if you think of uh, uh, eating her curds and whey. Little right. Miss Muffet. Right. Yes. Whey is actually the liquid that um, drains from yogurt. So actually, it's very simple um, to make your own whey at home if you can't find it in the store. Not at a Super local healthy, healthy stuff food too. Store. Exactly. I just simply took a um, a bowl with a strainer, lined it with some cheesecloth, and then you'll take regular yogurt, not Greek, 
regular plain yogurt. You, in, in, you're in its essence making Greek yogurt right now. Exactly. Because the yogurt that's left over is going to be a, a thicker, firmer yogurt, which is what Greek yogurt usually refers to. This is how it's made. And then mm -hmm. you can use that to make a little tzatziki. That's great. Exactly. And so this t just sits out for about 6 to 12 hours or so. The yeah, whey overnight. actually starts to come out pretty s quickly, but um, it's best to pop that in the refrigerator and wait for it to, right. to strain. Right, for sure, for sure. But, but that's what it looks like when it comes out? Exactly. Kind of a greenish, yellowish liquid. Yeah. Um, so what we'll be doing is first slicing up some carrots. Okay. And don't throw away the tops. No, right? Right, they're really good to saute with a little bit of olive oil, lemon. For sure. Um, but and those are some nice looking carrots too. You. Yeah, yeah, straight from the farmer's market. I'm just going to slice those up, about eighth inch, quarter inch slices. You want them to be thin because the idea with this slicing the carrots is that um, you want to impart as much of the carrot flavor into the juice as possible. So. Thin slices means more surface area. Right, got it. So, I'm using a fancy decorative bottle this time around. I mean, you can use a regular uh, mason jar at home. Um, you can use a larger mason jar if you want to do batch. Um, so, essentially, just combine all ingredients into the jar. And next, we'll top that up with a little ginger. You want to get the ginger going? Sure. All right. Let's see. Let's see this. And then we'll also add some orange peel. And this is something that you can do with a bunch of different ingredients. It doesn't have to be carrot ginger. It could right. be uh, beets. Beets actually make a really good kvass as How well. How would you like this cut? Um, actually, uh, minced would be great. Nice. You got it. A little bit more of the carrots. Um, but yeah, if you if you wanted to use beets, you could use beets. Um, actually, It'd be very kvass. red. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful blood red drink. Um, you can make this with other vegetables, other aromatics. You could switch in. You could add in some herbs. It's really something that you can impart your own flavor and style onto. Um, awesome. I'm also going to get some of this orange zest. I just want a very thin layer with almost no pith. We just want those beautiful oils from the orange skin. Which are incredibly like like flavorful and aromatic. <sighs> I mean... My goodness, right? When you're drinking this drink, it, you can just smell the oil wafting up. It's uh, the orange oil wafting up. It's it's gorgeous. It adds a nice uh, flavor profile to this drink. And the ginger, um, again, also really helps with uh, digestion and adds a nice bite to this drink because it, it ends up having kind of a slightly sour, not very sweet flavor profile. We're not adding any sugar at all. Is so this there is any sort of effervescence like a kombucha yes, gets? Yes, and full disclosure, um, after you've been fermenting this for a couple of it days... It does get created alcohol. It does. Content, but that's okay, a especially if you're going to mix it with amount. vodka, which <laughs> I am guilty of having done. That has happened in our house. That's wonderful. And kombucha and vodka. I, I, <laughs> Who knew? Well, you I know, listen... Try that. You, Anything to make me feel better about it. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's good for your belly, good for your mind. Right. Um, yeah, this is really good by itself. Uh, and the alcohol um, isn't a lot, actually. If you just leave it out for a few days, you end up with about 0 0.5 to 1.5 alcohol by volume. So Yeah, so relatively little. Uh, so there we go. I'm just going to top up. Now, the sequence of the next couple of steps is a little bit important. You want to put the salt in, Kay. about a half teaspoon or so for the amount we're using. And then um, we'll top it up with some whey, carefully pouring that in. You could have used a funnel today. I should have. Bro. So just funnel. not that much whey, actually, right? No, just, just a, just a little cup. bit. Exactly. And then the most of the liquid is going to be the water. And next we would shake that up so that the salt dissolves. You don't want to ever mix the salt into the whey directly because that would end up uh, killing some of those bacteria. Interesting. So that's why you... Do the salt, then the whey, then the okay. water. Stir it up. Cover it with a coffee filter like I've done over here um, or a clean towel, a little rubber band. Or if you're using a canning jar, you can just use this on top of the and coffee filter. And the reason for that is? To allow for some air to come out and allow for, if you didn't do this, you'd, you'd end up with a really bubbly drink and it wouldn't ferment the right way. Okay. So you do need that exchange of oxygen. And, and how long are we looking at time-wise so to let this ferment? Two to four days, um, depending on how hot it is in your environment and how strong you like the flavor. If you want a more sour, more powerful kvass, four days. If it's cold outside, four days. If it's a warm day or you, and you just want something light, um, a couple of days is, is all you really need. 
And I mean, you can. This, there's nothing wrong with this. This is. I mean, you can eat, drink that as much as you want. Right? Yes. And actually, the another tip I would have is after you've made your kvass after a couple of days, save some of it. Don't drink it all, even though it's delicious. Don't drink it all. It'll save be a some starter. Food. Exactly. Now you've just made kvass starter. Now you Got don't have it. to do this stuff with the yogurt. Um, if you don't have the yogurt or you don't have time to strain it uh, to make whey, you could also use um, live sauerkraut uh, juice, which sounds a little funky, but at that. If you use sauerkraut juice, you wouldn't use the salt. So um, that can be a starter as well. This, in fact, would now be a probiotic. Yes, and in fact, the whey makes it a probiotic. That's exactly it. Great. That's what we're getting from the, uh, the yogurt when we're straining it out, those beneficial bacteria. Well, I tell you what, let's take a break. All right. All right, we'll get all cleaned up here. We're going to have uh, some delicious food. Uh, this looks great. I can't stop staring at it. <laughs> and I'm going to get to try some kvass. Yes, the fermented one. All right, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Hunter Hayes. I know myself and I know my buzz warning signs. There's no reason to take any risks that aren't necessary. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I'm here with Jessica Bodwin, registered dietitian, and our food is plated up. Yes. Our delicious looking fennel and radicchio salad. We've got our sweet potatoes with our miso and tahini dressing and kvass. Mm -hmm. Shall I pour you a glass Let's of kvass? Let's have some kvass. All right. I am uh, definitely interested in trying this. This is going to be... Yes. I can smell the fermentation. A new experience. This is a carrot, ginger, orange kvass that we're using today. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Got a little bit, little bit of a salty quality mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. Not salty, but you can taste the salt that you did put in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not overly fermented. Mm. Refreshing. Very vegetal. Yes. Very vegetal. That's and if what you I leave it say. out for a couple more days, it'll get even more tart. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you like to? Uh, yeah. I take. I think I'll take this little guy over here. All right. I'm gonna do the same. Thank you. Some of this delicious fennel down here with this dressing. There right. you go. That's the good stuff. Yeah, and this is a real <laughs> knife and fork salad. Here it too, is. Right? It these is. These whole leaves. I like to leave the radicchio leaves whole. They look really nice as as a centerpiece. Very pretty, and you yeah. know, you could almost eat it as a lettuce wrap. That's true. Little lettuce cups with oranges in it. Why not? It's fantastic. Mhm. Mm mm. That's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Bright, 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 mm -hmm. fresh, super fresh, and the tarragon at the end. Really Love complements it. the fennel. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. Mm. Sweet potatoes. Yes. Don't mind if I do. Mm. Just take a little swipe of that 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 sauce with Get it. Get a good scoop out of it. Mm-hmm. That's a winner. <laughs> that is so fantastic. I love. Mm. I love it. Mm -hmm. And that, that the miso really brought a, a, a saltiness to the tahini mm -hmm. that works so well together. And then the sweetness mm -hmm. from the, the sweet potato, mm. a little bit of char and caramelization. Nice and earthy. That mm. is an absolute winner. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm like gonna, it. I'm going to for sure make that. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, my goodness. You've got the recipe. <laughs> my goodness, that is great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sure, I think it's safe to say you'll be back again. I'll be back. We'll do something like this, me. but different. Absolutely. All right, great. <laughs> well, it really goes to show you we are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, Jessica, everyone here on Community Cooking, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 
8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.